So we are in about the year 2013 right now, and it was about roughly 2,000 years ago uh, that paper was first invented in the area of China. I'm going to put this 2,000 years ago, so it's clear what I mean here. Okay, and it was, even though it was invented in China about 2,000 years ago, it took another 1,000 years or so since its invention, roughly it's about here, before uh, paper basically made its way uh, into and spread to the Europeans. Okay, and obviously subsequent to that, a few hundred years after it made it to the Europeans, in about the 15th century or so, uh, it was uh, Gutenberg, Gutenberg who basically invented the printing press, and that obviously revolutionized the way that uh, paper was uh, disseminated and what it could be used for. Okay, now on route from uh, China to Europe, uh, paper and the knowledge of paper making basically spread uh, from other countries. For example, uh, from China, it, it did spread to areas like Japan. Uh, it did spread uh, to to Korea and also to Central Asia as well. So you can kind of imagine other areas where it's spreading, and you can kind of see that uh, paper started to spread this way in terms of how it was made and and, and so on. And roughly in about the eighth century, which which is about here or so, in the 8th century, uh, it was the Muslim world that discovered paper from the Chinese, okay? Uh, and that makes a lot of sense if you could look at, look at things geographically, and uh, the Muslims themselves basically spread knowledge of paper to areas that were under their dominion, so to speak, and, and that included areas like, uh, like Iraq, uh, for example, it included areas like Egypt, uh, it included areas like Syria, uh, and so on, and then actually, um, the the idea spread uh, through other parts of North Africa, and from there, it actually spread on to Spain and into Europe as a whole. Okay, so it really was according to this particular path that paper actually spread from China to Europe. Now, if you think about it today, much of the emphasis is placed either on the initial Chinese invention of paper or the uh, European improvements to paper. And as a result, the role of the Muslim world in the transmission of paper has either become uh, relegated into, into near total obscurity, or it's been somewhat excised or removed altogether. Now, having said that, nonetheless, the Islamic civilization did play a very important, very prominent role uh, in the development and dissemination of paper. And I thought I would do a video, or maybe a two-part video, to describe part of that role. So for starters, one piece of evidence regarding the overall uh, prominence or importance of the Muslim world in the development of paper can actually be seen when you look at the English term, the English term ream. Okay, uh, so the word ream, uh, in case you don't know, basically is uh, it's an English word that stands for uh, 500 sheets of paper. Basically, when you buy paper, uh, for example, when you when you go to Staples and you buy paper at the store, you buy them in these these thick packages of 500 sheets or reams of paper. Okay, now you might not know how the term ream came about, so I'm going to give you a, a quick introduction to the etymology of the word ream. So the word ream itself actually derives from a word in French, and, and this is actually an old French word, and I'm likely going to mispronounce it, but the old French word is, I think, rame. Okay. And that French word, or that old French word rather, in turn comes from a Spanish word. Uh, and the Spanish word is, uh, is resma. Okay, so reem comes from reme, which comes from resma. And the Spanish word in turn comes from an Arabic word. And that Arabic word is resma, which uh, stands for a bale. Okay. Um, or a bundle for that matter, so bail and bundle are synonyms with each other. Now one possible reason, and, and obviously you can tell from this, this etymology that, that clearly the Arab world played an important role in, in having coined this important uh, concept of a brain which we use today, uh, but one possible reason why the role of the Arab world or the Islamic world in the development of paper or the dissemination of paper has been largely uh, expunged from the history books or otherwise ignored in, in many sources uh, might in part be due to the fact that paper actually developed in Islamic lands, uh, or the way that it developed in Islamic lands was different from the way that it developed in European lands. For example, uh, in Islamic lands, 
the paper they had actually lacked watermarks, and that was different from the European counterpart. And so this lack of watermarks actually makes it a lot harder to identify or really pinpoint any specific dates or locations associated with that paper. Now that being said, I think the introduction of paper in the Islamic world in the 8th century um, and its dissemination through the 14th century led to advances in areas like mathematics and, and science and, and the arts and literature uh, and, and law and commerce and a whole bunch of other areas. It really was um, a, a time of, of flourishment of knowledge, so to speak. Now, I do want to point out also that according to an Arab historian whose name was Abdul Malik al Ta'alibi, uh, paper making was actually introduced to Samarkand through Chinese prisoners who were basically held captive by an Arab commander named Ziad ibn Salim. Now, at that time, the, the value of paper was quickly recognized, which then led to efforts to manufacture it on a much larger scale, and that in turn uh, led to paper being uh, an especially important commodity that would soon be uh, ubiquitous. It really would be everywhere. Now, even if al Ta'alibi's account that I mentioned is apocryphal or is otherwise uh, not entirely accurate, uh, there is still a great deal of archaeological evidence to suggest that Central Asia was really the conduit, the vehicle, the path by which paper arrived in the Middle East, and, and moreover, uh, that merchants along the Silk Road had been utilizing paper for quite some time. Okay, now, I do want to mention a few of these archaeological finds just to, to give you some examples. Uh, so uh, one of the first ones was actually a cave in... Uh, Dunhuang, where they actually found over 30,000 paper scrolls that were just in some sense serendipitously discovered by a Buddhist monk. And, and a little to the west of that, in between uh, Dunhuang and Lulan, a set of letters and actually letter fragments were discovered in a watchtower. Um, one of these letters actually was addressed to Samarkand, which is about 2,000 miles to the west. Uh, There's also a third uh, pretty significant archaeological find that occurred in Mount Mog, which is uh, proximate to uh, uh, Penzikent, which is in Tajikistan. And, uh, you can see uh, Tajikistan up here in, in Central Asia. Uh, and, and in Tajikistan in particular, um, one interesting thing is, is that they actually found 76 paper documents, and uh, these documents were written in Arabic, in Chinese text, and also in a language called uh, Sogdian. Uh, and they were discovered by Soviet scholars in 1933. Okay, So that's... You know, obviously quite a bit of evidence in and of itself. There's actually other evidence as well that points to, uh, again, a Central Asian influence uh, through which paper actually arrived into the Middle East. And that evidence involves looking at the etymology for the first Arabic word for paper, which is, and I'll try to obliterate it here, it's, uh, it's uh, Krakhad. Okay, and that's the, the first Arabic word for paper. And this word actually, in turn, derives from a Turkish word, for paper, which is uh, Khagit. Okay, and I'll put some, some accent marks. You, if you do know anything about transliteration, you'll be able to pronounce it correctly, which I certainly can't do. Uh, and these words actually derive from words in Sogdian and, and actually Uyghur words. And, and these words, in turn, derive from the word, and, and there's many chains of, of, of derivations here, but these words, in turn, derive from the Chinese word guzi. Okay, and guzi actually stands for paper, and specifically it was paper that was made from the uh, paper mulberry bark. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a flavor of some of the evidence regarding how paper was transmitted from China into uh, Europe via the Islamic lands. What I'll do is I'll stop this video right here. In the next video, I'll talk about some applications of paper, uh, as well as its further development in uh, the Islamic world.